Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Worship Tech Booth Makeover. In this video, I'm gonna focus on the improvements we made to just optimizing the video directing station that we have here. So again, give you guys context, we're here at Grace Church. There's a Dylan, Dylan up there working hard on getting our audience mics installed. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, so here's the tech booth and then on the back side of the booth, this is where we've been directing video. So here are some images of what this looked like before. We have a television studio HD that has to go in for some repair on the audio ports. Um, and then there's lots of, we had a lot of cabling above the, the countertop. So the goal was really to get all that stuff below. Um, I had a rack mount production studio 4K, which I'll show you down here in a minute. Um, we have a box caster. And then we've got a Mac mini here. Um, so let's just walk you through kind of this workstation. So when you're sitting at it, it's a very simple setup. I think I'm gonna call this the minimalist video directing setup for churches. So on our left here, we have our multi-view for our ATEM. We usually have four cameras going. I just have two on right now. And then we've got Pro Presenter full screen, Pro Presenter lyrics right there. And then we've got our monitor uh, for our Mac mini. So the Mac mini, has a couple of purposes. It's running ATEM software control. So, you know, we can control our ATEM uh, switcher, which is down here. And then it also is good to be able to um, access uh, Chrome. So we can go onto BoxCast, we can check YouTube, Facebook for our streams. Of course, BoxCast is pushing all that out there, makes it nice and simple. And then the ATEM Mini is connected to the Stream Deck here that I added to this setup. So this is a Stream Deck XL. It's the biggest one you can get. We're not using all the buttons as you can see, but what's really great about this setup is it really simplifies the switching experience for the volunteers. So if I were to go through here and on the bottom here, the red buttons are the program changes. So I'm you know, pressing the program cues here to switch between camera inputs. Um, and then we could still use the green buttons uh, to preview something before uh, cutting to it, which is the crossfade button here on the bottom right. So it's a definitely a great, uh, really lean video switching setup. Of course, it's cool to have the full workstation of the Television Studio Pro or whatever they call it. You know, it has the bar and all that stuff. But honestly, guys, stylistically, what we're doing for worship, we just need some cuts most of the time, maybe some one second crossfades. You really don't need a full on broadcast TV video switching experience. We're never doing like picture in picture and things like that. It's a very, very simple setup. And of course, what's also cool about the Stream Deck is you can just have these, you know, easy buttons to have the computer pull up. Okay, here's our YouTube channel. Um, here is our BoxCast account. Um, so it's just really easy for volunteers when they get here on Sunday morning, they can pull up what they need to. I'm really just scratching the surface of what's uh, capable with this Stream Deck. The key to utilizing the Stream Deck with the ATEM switcher is using the companion plugin for Stream Deck. So when you're in the Stream Deck software, you're gonna wanna go here to the Stream Deck store and then you're gonna search companion. And then you're gonna go to this plugin here. I have it installed, the companion button by BitFocus. This is a cool little plugin that allows you to pretty much you know, instantly start controlling your ATEM from the Stream Deck. So think of the companion as kind of like uh, an interface between your Stream Deck and the ATEM. So then when you're in Google Chrome, you just go to the BitFocus uh, link for companion and then you just walk through the installation process for the companion plugin. Once it's installed, it's gonna show up here on the upper right of your computer, and then you're gonna to wanna to launch the user interface, the GUI. When you're installing it, it's gonna ask you what kind of mode you wanna install companion, and you wanna select the one, since you installed the plugin for Stream Deck, you wanna select the one that allows you to run Stream Deck software normally alongside of the BitFocus companion because when you're looking at the Stream Deck, this page here, the ATEM controls, those are coming from companion, but these ones up here are just basic Stream Deck buttons that I programmed in the Stream Deck software. Um, if those aren't working together correctly, it's probably because of that setting when you're installing it isn't configured right. And then you, when you're configuring it under connections, you can see here, I just searched under add a connection over here. You just search for ATEM and then you're gonna add the ATEM connection here. So someone went and pre-programmed 
all of these buttons that are gonna pretty much instantly map to your ATEM, you're gonna wanna make sure as well that when you are looking at your ATEM connection, you get the right uh, IP address assigned for your ATEM, which is gonna be on your network. That's how, you know, the same way you're connecting to the ATEM over um, ATEM control software, you want that right IP address to be in there. And then under surfaces, you have to rescan your USB uh, connection, so it's gonna detect the Stream Deck as a surface. And you can see it also detects that the ATEM uh, companion plugin was already installed. So guys, that was me like Googling for 10 to 15 minutes for doing this stuff for the first time myself. Um, just I just wanna see what it was like just kind of figuring it out, but hopefully that'll save you some time. The really key is getting the companion app, uh, making sure the companion plugin is installed in the Stream Deck, and then get your IP here in the, the BitFocus companion app when you do the ATEM connection, get the IP address for that ATEM, and you should be off to the races, because then you go to the buttons tab, and now you can just go ahead and like click on a space, and then you can go to presets over here, and then you can start you know, selecting your buttons for uh, downstream keys, preview, program, you know, all these different buttons that you can just start dragging and dropping onto your stream deck. All right, so the other really convenient thing about this setup is, well, you guys see, we've got the Bear Dynamic DT770 Pro headphones here uh, to monitor the audio. And then we've got the Behringer Flow. I'll talk more about that in a second. But what's cool when you're at this workstation now is using the Mac screen sharing app, I am remote controlling our broadcast uh, mix template running in Logic Pro on the computer that's kind of back beside the stage. So I'll go to that workstation too in a moment. But this is really great because now we can just, you know, be able to tweak our broadcast mix from the video switching station here. So I actually imagine there's gonna be times where, you know, whoever's directing a uh, video, you know, cause it's not that complicated of setup, could also, you know, be looking at the template here and then, you know, just maybe making some slight adjustments to, you know, who's leading uh, a song. You know, so they're just like, hey, let's bring vocal one up. Let's bring vocal two down. Because this template, although it would be great to have someone intensely mixing it the whole time, I think there's some people, if they can multitask pretty well with video switching and mixing, I think they would do just fine with this system. So we've got it kind of set up now where someone could do some light mixing from this station or we could have an active broadcast mixing person backstage where it's also a little bit more isolated of an environment because these are not noise isolating. I mean, it's not an ideal way to mix when you're here at front of house because it's super loud, um, but it works. You can make some subtle changes. Here's a closer look of the rack we have underneath the tech booth. I got this from B&H Photo. It's a 12U array rack, and I'll put the links for all these things down below. I've got a power conditioner, and then I got two 2U shelves, rack shelves, one for the Mac Mini, one for the box caster. And I would definitely, even though they could fit in one U, I, I prefer having two just in case we need to like stick my hand in there and adjust something. Uh, we really don't have that much we have to rack back here. Um, and then I've got the Production Studio 4K. I'd like your guys' input. I racked it towards the bottom, and I, again, I want to make sure there's space because there's nothing worse when you're trying to like get back there and adjust a S SDI connections and everything's so crammed together. Um, so sometimes I'm like, even though something only takes up one U, uh, it's better to give it more than one U of space in the rack. Uh, so then the other thing I want to do is just get some, um, uh, what do they call it, those, those blanks. So it'll be nice and like, I can put these blanks on the rack here, so this will just be black. It'll look a little bit better. Um, but again, I'm not really in a rush to do that when I'm still building out the system, making sure we have everything in there. So I'll order some of those inexpensive blanks to put in there soon. And then there's probably some better cable management I could do under here. Um, it's still not completely done, but uh, we're definitely making progress. Just a note about the video switcher. So the Production Studio 4K pretty much has all the same input outputs as the other switcher we had, but um, it just doesn't have that control surface. But again, I prefer the Stream Deck. And then we've got the box caster here. Um, this is taking the HDMI program out from the Production Studio 4K. And then we also have the SDI program out being sent to an AV closet at the back of the room here. That's where we have a video hub so we can send the program to places within the church. Uh, and then yeah, the Mac Mini. Really, it's just got a keyboard, a mouse, it's got the Stream Deck plugged into it. 
I don't have any dock or anything like that that we need for this Mac quite yet because it's such a simple setup. Yeah, what's also great about this setup, putting things on the power conditioner makes it easier to power on and off the Production Studio 4K because it's kind of intended to be in this type of setup with a rack. It doesn't have a dedicated power button anywhere. So now we use that as our power switch right here. Real quick, if you guys want my team to come alongside you and help you optimize the systems at your church for your worship ministry, for your tech ministry, check out Worship Ministry School down below. You're gonna see a button down there to uh, apply to join our program. You're gonna be able to schedule a free strategy session with one of our coaches so we can learn more about your church, the specifics of what your goals are, and then if it makes sense, you can join the program. So. Check that out down below, and we've actually just started offering on-site visits. So a lot of what you're seeing me do here at Grace Church, uh, this is exactly what Adam's been doing on our team, traveling to different churches around the country as part of the Accelerator program. So click that link to learn more, and hopefully we'll see you soon. So now let's talk about the Behringer Flow, but in order for this to make more sense, we're gonna go back to our broadcast mix station so you can kind of follow the signal path and, and how this all works. So let's go backstage. All right, welcome backstage. Here's the stage here. And then here is our uh, newly organized, we're still not done yet, but things are pretty, pretty well organized and getting there. Um, we got this toolbox, we got the little storage containers here. It's really gonna help out with storing things. Uh, they used to put mics and stuff in the tech booth, but now all these things will be here. I'm gonna get some foam back here. So it's not really completely done, but you guys get the idea. Um, and it just really cleaned up the space. Uh, we were able to get rid of the old analog mixer we were using back here for some audio routing. Um, and here's our MacBook Pro running the Logic template. And we also have a monitor here so whoever's mixing can see what's going on. They can see the program feed of the service. So we're continuing to enhance our broadcast mix template a little bit each week. The next big upgrade we have coming with our broadcast mix is actually having crowd mics, which Dylan is installing right now. So that'll be really awesome once we get that up and running. Don't mind the screen. We actually have some integrators right here working on video stuff, that's why it probably that's why that just it just went out so uh, but you get the picture right so we've got the computer here and now what's happening is our stereo out I'm just looping it right now stereo out is going to the Behringer flow as a USB device and this is a really powerful interface basically it's like an interface and a mixer in one I think it was like 250 bucks really impressed with this little guy right now we'll see how how it stands up to the test of time it's just gonna be sitting here so it shouldn't have any issues it's not like it's gonna be moving around very much so on the Behringer flow we have audio coming out of the stereo output on logic into the USB input on this mixing console then from there we have a headphone jack back here uh, the headphones aren't plugged in right now but they go in right here you hear those you can hear it coming through. I've got headphone volume control right there. So I can monitor my Logic Pro mix back here. And then out of the main left and right on this console, this audio is being sent to our stage box. Um, and then it sends that stereo audio to the mixing console as two separate channels for us. So we like to route all of our audio through the mixing console. It's not completely necessary, but um, it actually gives us more flexibility in how we are routing audio from our sources, from our mixes into the video switcher. So that's the thing to remember, audio is coming left and right out of here, going into our stage box, which is on the other side of the stage, and then we're gonna see it back at the M32. All right, so here we are back at the M32, and you can see we've got stereo channels. These are our audio feeds left and right for our Logic Pro broadcast mix. So this, again, gives us the flexibility to having the audio come here to be able to route it pretty much wherever we want to send it. So then what happens is these channels are sent to our broadcast mix bus. So if you look at this broadcast mix bus, you'll see what's in it right now are the the band, the band audio, which is, you know, I could actually probably bump that up a little bit more. And then we've got uh, the speaking audio, which is kind of, I could probably level these out. <laughs> I'm actually glad I'm looking at this right now. But the idea is we have a mix bus here that has the talking mics and then our band music coming from Logic right here. Then this mix bus has an output on the back of the console, which is going over here into this other Behringer flow. All right, so back here, we have that mix bus coming into the Behringer flow into channels one and two. 
It's kind of cool because with this little mixer, let's say I had another mix I wanted to send in here if we wanted to separate speaking and band mics um, until they get to this, this mixer here, we could do that. We have the inputs available on this to do that. And then the master output controlled by this knob right here gets sent out of the Behringer Flow into the A10 Production Studio 4K. If you guys are wondering about latency and syncing up audio and video in this setup, you can see our buffer in Logic is at 1024, which adds latency. Um, and then it's got about 49 milliseconds of latency there. It seems to actually line up pretty well uh, with the video, just with that amount of latency on the buffer. And then at the mixing console, we're not really having to add any latency here. I was just checking, looking on our direct outputs that go to the um, switcher or to the Behringer Flow, and maybe the Behringer Flow adds a little bit of latency too, so that could that could be a factor in it. You wanna be careful if you're introducing new mixers, you don't wanna have a ton of additional latency. But I could add output latency here on the um, M32. But the way it is now, it looks like everything's lined up well. We're pretty happy with the sync. You can check the service from July 3rd, 2022 with the most recent kind of version of this or probably the following week july 10th or whatever sunday that is um, that's actually going to be this coming sunday you should see the video a couple days after that so if you want to go check out the sync setup yourself or maybe i can make a video about this in the in the future but these are the places where we would add audio delay because in 99 percent of the time the audio needs to be slowed down because the video uh, feeds are always going to have more latency from the cameras and the switcher and all those things. So that does it guys for this episode of Worship Tech Booth Makeover at Grace Church. We're making a lot of progress. We have not yet arrived. We probably never will, but I just want you guys to get some ideas and inspiration on how to continue to take your worship tech ministry to the next level. And sometimes it's really just the process of cleaning up the process of elimination and optimization less than, uh, and, and not so much the process of buying a ton of new gear all the time. But if you do need new gear uh, because all your stuff is really outdated, check out the Worship Ministry Toolkit linked below this video. It's a free guide that walks you through all of our most up-to-date recommendations. And of course, for this particular setup, I'll list all this gear down below. Go check it out. Go pick it up on Sweetwater, B&H, Amazon, all, of, all the places that you can spend money and find these things.